genealogy until further generations they do um, research and they find out that that cell phone, you know, that, um, that beam that's coming from the cell phone, you're putting it near to your head and you'll find all of a sudden people just stop, start dropping dead. What happened? Because people want high signals on their cell phone, they increase the radiation of the, of the cell phone, you put it by your brain and then you, you have brain cancer. They don't know the results of these things until the um, till, you know, results come out and so on. So, and this isn't to say of like the technology is bad, but the technology, what I'm just explaining is it does have harmful effects. And when you understand this, then inshallah ta'ala you can work so that those harmful effects don't harm you inshallah. One of the, um, the technologies, and you'll see this, the ulama of the past, when they completed their books, you would see, and this book was completed under the moonlight in Medina al-Munawwara on such and such a day, and, and then it's like concluded. Under the moonlight. And there's no roof on the masjid. One of the technologies that happened to us is the advent of um, the electricity and the light. What electricity and light has done to the people is it's created an artificial light source that pushes the person to stay awake at a time when normally their body would have told them to go to sleep. And as you know that when you go to sleep, what do you do? You shut off the light. And not too many people, unless they're like really uh, different than others, they sleep with the lights on. Normally people, they shut off the light. Now if you keep the lights on, the lights are artificially pushing you to an unnatural sleep pattern. And so subhanAllah, you know, <clears throat> If someone, for example, was to just say, okay, forget the, um, the ceiling and let's just forget all the lighting in our house and I'm just going to work with the sun. When the sun comes up, I get up. When the sun goes down, I go down. Do you think that person would be more productive or less productive? He would absolutely be more productive. Absolutely. Because that, that sun's natural power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put into it so, and this is another of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that, power, that, sun, that sunlight gives energy to the person. <clears throat> and obviously from this unnatural, things that uh, push us to the next level is the caffeine and the foods that we eat, the fatty foods and all the acid that goes into our body that will also push the body into an unnatural state. And, and this is the topic of another lecture, which is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in his food and drink. And you'll see that that the sleep and the food and drink go hand in hand together to um, heal the person. Also in our lifestyle we have daylight savings time. It just turned daylight savings times recently and what daylight savings time does is basically a person says I have a, a pattern where I go to sleep at 11 o'clock for example and then I wake up this time. Daylight savings time will then um, hit the, uh, the timing so that the person is going to sleep an hour later. And they're, going, they're waking up an hour earlier, they're just messing up their entire system. And they say that when daylight savings times happens, the chances of people dying in a car accident the next day is increased. Because of the way that the timings were changed. And you'll see that when the timings are changed, we're forced, even though subhanAllah, the changing of the hours isn't the sunnah of the Muslims. This is a European custom started in Australia, and it actually didn't start very uh, long ago. It started in Australia, and you may think that the whole world is in daylight savings time, but they're not. It's just certain countries that adopted this law, and it's like European countries that do this. And it messes up the person uh, who's following that alarm clock, messes up the internal system. Okay, speaking about how sleep makes a person successful. Because, <clears throat> as the ulama said, that if a person's looking for the akhirah, they will find it in the sunnah of the Prophet And if they're looking for the dunya, they will also find it in the sunnah of the Prophet And so if someone, if you, whatever you want, you want the akhirah, you want the dunya and the akhirah, you will find it in the hadith, the guidance of the Prophet How does this work? Of the sunnah of the Prophet regarding sleep, the Prophet you know how people go to an imam and they'll say something like, Ya Shaykh, make dua for me. You know, you're a pious person, make du'a for me, right? Or if someone's going for hajj, make du'a for me, so on. Imagine if you could get the Prophet ﷺ to make du'a for you. You'd actually get the chance, Ya Rasulullah, make du'a for me. Yeah, and there's companions that did that. The Prophet ﷺ would talk about the, something and they would say, Ya Rasulullah, ud'u Allah and akuna minhum. Make du'a that I'm one of those people. 
And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, you're one of those people. And then another companion would say, Ya Rasulullah, ujra Allah na kuna minhum. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, you know, make dua that this person asking, he's the second person, he's copying the first guy. He's saying, make dua that I'm one of these people, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, sabaqa kabiha ukkasha. That ukkasha radiallahu an, he beat you to this. That this isn't a unique uh, remark that you're making. Ukkasha beat you to this. So the, the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make dua for someone is something very special. So here is a blanket du'a for the entire ummah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha." O oh Allah, bless my ummah in in the morning, in their morning period. So that morning time, the after fajr time, not only like scientifically or whatever, you have the du'a of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam behind you in working in the morning, in working in the morning. So what's really amazing about this? The companion that narrated this, Sakh al Ghamidi radiallahu ta'ala an, he narrated this, and they're not just narrating the hadith, they're like, this is like a business tip. He's like, okay, blessed in the morning. And the Prophet also, when he would send out his armies, it would always be in the morning. You wouldn't say, okay, let's meet after Isha and I'll send out the army. They didn't do that. They'll say, we will meet after Fajr. So you will be blessed in your journey and you have barakah in the time that it goes out. So they would go out early in the morning and the later a person left in the morning, the less distance they, that they would be able to cover. Sakhr al-Ghamidi radiallahu an, he did this. Because the Prophet sallallahu said this, he had a business and he would always start his business early in the morning. He was like, I'm implementing the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu boom, sun comes up, he started his business. And then the companions are saying, فَبَارَكَ يعني كَثُرَ مَالُهُ That he became a very wealthy person. Because of his implementation of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to start his business early in the morning. And subhanAllah, we're living at lives talking about like the technology. We have 24-hour um, shopping and we have uh, all these things that go into the night. Many of you actually work the night shift. Even people can't be here at this lecture because they're working at, they're working at night. But the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, if you want, you have your business, you want it to be successful, work in the morning and focus on those morning times. We also see that Ali radiallahu ta'ala an and his wife Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu anha, they uh, were in much difficulty in their life. And so when there was some war spoils and there was like servants uh, from the war spoils, Ali radiallahu anhu told uh, Fatima radiallahu anhu to go and ask for a servant to help them in their affairs. So imagine if you, what, what could you do if you had a butler or a servant? You'd wake up, they iron your clothes, they make breakfast for you. They basically make your dunya easier. Right? They make your dunya easier, everybody wishes they had a butler. Some of you may have a butler, some of you don't have a butler. But if you do, you know what I'm talking about. I don't, but anyhow. The Prophet ﷺ, she went to Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha and um, she asked her about this servant. And so Aisha radiallahu anha, um, she spoke to the Prophet ﷺ about it. And the Prophet ﷺ went to Ali radiallahu anha and Fatima radiallahu anha. He saw them, they were lying down, they were going to get up, he said, no, remain uh, lying down. And then he sat between them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, ala adullakuma. He said, shall I not tell you about something that's better for you than what you asked for. What was it? He said to do tasbih 33 times. To do alhamdulillah 33 times. Say Allahu Akbar 34 times. Ida awaitum ila farashikuma. Uh, but if you go to your bed to do this, just like after salah you say subhanallah alhamdulillah Allah Akbar 33 times, and then 34 times, he said that it's khayrun lakuma min khadim. It's better for you. That if you put this scale, if you had a butler or you had a servant, and you have this habit of saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la, uh, Allahu Akbar, before going to sleep, on the scale of what will bring you more benefit, it will be your tasbih before going to sleep. And so we see that it benefits the person in the dunya. <clears throat> now when a person goes to sleep, and then they're trying to wake up and the alarm clock hits, right? The alarm clock starts going beep, beep, beep. You know how the alarm clock goes. You all have your own alarm clock sound. When you, why, why do they have a snooze button so big? There's no, um, there's no alarm clock that doesn't have a snooze button. Because they know that the nature of the human is that shaitan is on their back. 
he tied three knots around this person, and so it, you don't call it the snooze button, you call it the shaitan button. Right? The shaitan button that tells you that the night is long. Go back to sleep. Right? That, I just thought of that right now. <laughs> the shaitan button. The snooze button. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that when a person goes to sleep, three knots are tied around the person. And this is a very uh, famous hadith. But the point the Prophet ﷺ says, when the person tries to wake up, the knot will take effect and shaitan will whisper that, don't worry, uh, you still got time. You still got time to sleep. And so when shaitan says that to you, or says that to the human being, he hits the snooze button, three knots take effect, the guy's knocked out. Oh, there's another 10 minutes.